Hey guys, this is going to be another video for the Wheels in Japan playlist. So obviously it's going to be about cars. So if you're not interested in cars, you probably won't be interested in this at all. But it's about Shark N. We do get asked about Shark N because we mentioned it in uh, some videos uh, about getting a driver's license in Japan. And it's been mentioned on a couple of videos just briefly, the, the cost of Shark N. So Shark N is sort of like, uh, in Australia, they call it a roadworthy certificate. Uh, in the UK, I think they call it MOT certificate or something like that. So it's basically a certificate of roadworthiness of the vehicle. So it's a, it's a certificate that says that the vehicle is up to the legal standards required. And it's every two years and it's done at private uh, vehicle companies, so repair companies. So uh, people who have reasonably new cars usually take them to the dealer they bought them from. But you can also take them to other mechanics, mechanical workshops that are approved to do shark in. So, and usually what happens is quite usually, not always the case, but usually most vehicles have not had nobody has looked under the bonnet nobody has actually looked at the engine for two years and i'm talking about no no oil change well this is tight isn't it there we go uh nobody nobody's done anything to it so quite often it's quite quite common for for the car not to have had its oil checked or its water checked or sometimes even its tires checked any of its brake fluids or anything for two years quite often uh, there is exceptions. I know one guy who works on his own car, who checks his own car and does things to his own car. There's one guy that I know that does that. But everyone else I know here never does it. And even even though you guys would have seen uh, on the Wheels playlist, there's a, an amazing video, an, a, an old one of ours, but an amazing one that shows uh, shows us going to a, a gas station and like four staff crowding over the car and, and doing stuff to the car and they were uh, they were doing the cleaning the windows and they're emptying the ashtray and they're doing that sort of stuff but usually they don't look at the engine at all so usually they don't check the oil they don't check the water uh, if you ask them to they'll check the tires but usually people don't even think of that so unless those guys happen to notice that a tire is really low, they won't even check it usually. Uh, and then they'll, they'll say to you, hey, the tire's really low, do you want us to check it? But usually, usually they wouldn't do that either. So quite often the, the gasoline stations have a service bay that's usually a franchise situation, a Mr. Mr. Mechanic or Mr. Toolman or, or something, type franchise type system um, connected to the, the gas station. And if you want anything checked like that, usually you have to go to those guys for them to check, check it for you. Um, which actually they will often do for free, not always, but they'll often will. That's a bit of a sort of a goodwill thing to try and get you to come back and, and get your sharking done there, which is back on the topic. That was neatly done, wasn't it? So, so yeah, quite, quite amazing. Quite amazing that I think it's partly because most of the cars here aren't very old. People don't usually have very old cars. Uh, and I guess people who do have very old cars here might might just happen to be car fanatics or whatever and probably do check what's going on. Uh, but I think because the cars aren't very old and because most of them are, you know, sort of modern closed systems where the water doesn't usually disappear much. The oil's an interesting one though. Two years without checking the oil is quite amazing. And there's been times here where I have checked oil in cars that I was going to be involved with, you know, going somewhere with other people and checked the oil and found that there was hardly anything in it at all. And they, oh yeah, that's right, well it's not due for shark in for another six months, so you know, nobody's done the oil. So, quite amazing. So that's the first part of this story, is that, you know, that people here don't usually do anything to their cars. I've, I've got one friend, as I said, who works on his own car. I've never seen anybody even open the bonnet of a car. Um, an interesting thing too, in thinking about this topic, rarely see a car broken down. Can't remember seeing a car broken down here, which is quite amazing, considering they don't check the oil in the water, but just don't see it. Just don't see it. So that it's quite amazing. So probably because they are all pretty new, most of the people, you know, the cars for the first, well, probably for the first five years, uh, they just take them back to the dealer. That, that would be one exception to that two year thing. That, uh, people buying a new car, of course, would get a card from the dealer 
you know, every six months or so, probably saying bring it in for a service, in which case they would. But if, if they didn't get a card like that saying that, they wouldn't do it. And it's the same as at the shark end, usually a card comes from the company that did your shark end last time, or we'll sends you a card saying it's due again, you gotta come bring it in. So, so we're up to the shark end point now, so what happens is you take the car in, you give it to them, and then they will check all the stuff like that, so all the fluids and oils and things. But it, it's a real big, it's a funny thing. It, again, the cars aren't very old, so even though everything's checked, most of the focus is on real superficial stuff. Things like windscreen wiper blades, which they always change, even if, even if they're in good condition and the rubber's still soft, uh, they'll still change the windscreen wiper blades. And, and, and they don't always change the oil, even though it's two years old. They don't even they don't always change the oil. They look at the colour of it and if it seems, doesn't seem to be too bad, they'll often won't change it. Uh, if they do change it, they charge a lot. Sharkin's expensive, so there's the the government fee um, plus the cost of repairs. So you'd usually be looking at at least Juman, so at least at least a thousand dollars or twelve hundred dollars at least if, if there was nothing that needed to be done. Uh, and then if they do things like oil cha changes, they charge a fortune for it. Oil change, they'll, they'll change the oil if it needs doing, and other fluids, brake fluids and things like that. Uh, they'll change the windscreen wiper blades because they always do. And then they clean the car. They clean the car inside and out. Unless you tell them not to. They'll, they'll clean the car inside and out. And put, do, you know, clean the ashtray and put the deodorizer in the ashtray. And, it, a lot of the stuff's really superficial. If, if the tyres are okay, uh, if the tyres are not okay, if you happen to own a car in Japan and you're putting it in for sharking and you think the tyres are not okay, take them to a cheap tyre place and get them fixed. Uh, best is the best solution because if you let the mechanics do it or if you let the, the dealer in particular do it, it'll cost you a fortune. So if the tyres need replacing, they'll replace them. But if they don't need replacing, they'll, they'll tyre black them with uh, tire black, you know, like paint, black paint. So a lot of it's really superficial. And it's sort of, it's because, I think it's because the, the average Japanese person isn't usually terribly involved with their car anyway, as far as the condition of it and what parts and so on. So that they only see it on a superficial level as well. So when it comes back all shiny and clean inside and out with deodorant in the, in the you know, freshener in the ashtray and black tyres and all that sort of stuff, they're happy. Uh, shiny windows and all that sort of stuff because it all looks good. And then, you know, they get a, a bill for $1,200 or something and they just pay it. So, um, so yeah, it's expensive. And then for the newer cars, of course, they need less doing to them so they're not so expensive. But the older cars, uh, they need a lot doing to them. And they tend to be really super conservative or quick to replace stuff in older cars. So if you've got a car that's five years old, which is considered to be pretty old here, there's a good chance, even if your brake pads aren't too bad, that they'll change them. And even if you don't drive your car a lot, your brake pads are still pretty good, they'll probably change them. And they tend to be like that. They tend to be a lot, uh, you know, anything that's in doubt at all, it's changed, you put a new one in. And of course, usually the, their customers here don't question it because usually their customers don't know a lot about their car anyway. So, yeah, they do tend to do that. So, if you end up owning a car in Japan, again, you can sort of see why, if you're living in a city, living in a big city in Japan, owning a car really, it's, it, it's, not, it's probably not worth it because you've got this shark in thing every two years, but you've also got insurance, which, which can be, you know, six or $700 a year. And you have to find a company that will insure you because you're a foreigner. Um, then you, you know, usually the biggest expense in cities is the parking. You know, if you can if you can get parking, of, if you can park your car in a big city for less than a couple hundred dollars a month, you're doing well. You know, usually it's at least that. So it's usually not worth it. It's usually not worth owning a car if you're living in a big city. It's usually easier just to jump on the on the subway trains and the and the buses and things and whiz around that way. So unless you're living out in the countryside like this, it's probably not worth it. But uh, yeah, so so probably the solution if you do end up owning a car in Japan and you do have to put it in for shark in is if it's a dealer or someone like that, 
just to check the tyres and things yourself first, and then try to uh, get across to them when you put it in that, that if something doesn't really need fixing, you don't want it fixed. Uh, because otherwise they just do it, they just, and because the, the whole Abenai thing here with the whole things, you know, the fear of danger here, dangerous things, and particularly about cars, you know, it's easy for them to replace lots of stuff and just tell the customer that they had to do it for, for safety, and the customer will just go, oh, thank you very much. And customers don't usually question companies here like they do in other countries, in some other countries, you know. They, they won't, pro they won't, you know, cross, cross-examine the, the mechanic and ask him why he replaced things they won't do it they'll just say we replaced all these things and the customer will say thank you very much and they'll say it's going to be two thousand dollars they go oh thank you very much and they pay the money usually usually so so if you don't want to end up in that situation what you're best off to do is to tell them when you put it in that you that you don't want anything replaced that doesn't have to be replaced and then what what I actually have told them in the past is, if you replace anything, please put the part that you took out, the old part, please put that in the back of the car. So that, um, and I just tell them it's my funny way. I tell them that in, in my old country, I used to do work on my own cars. So I feel very uncomfortable not doing it myself. And then I want to know what's going on. So it's just my funny thing. Please excuse me, I'm very sorry, but can you just throw the old parts in the back so I can see what's happening with my car? And yeah, just got to be really diplomatic about it, basically. <laughs> just make it, get across to them that it's your own funny little thing. And then that way they'll be more hesitant to replace things. They won't replace something that's not worn out if they know that you're going to be looking at it later. So not to say that, uh, I'm not saying that we can't trust these mechanics. I'm just saying that because of the way they normally do things here, you know, they can get carried away and replace a lot of stuff. And they're doing it with the best intentions but it can get up end up getting very expensive for us so that's basically the story with well it's not just sharking but it's the maintenance of the cars isn't it you know there, there's some good mechanics here some good workshops and it's the same as with other countries the big dealers tend to be more expensive uh, the little mechanic in the town that has his little garage and does his own thing tends to be a little bit more expensive a little bit cheaper not always not always, but that does tend to be the case. That the little guy tends to be tends to be cheaper than the big, the big, uh, the big dealerships. Although one thing about the dealerships can be, they are terribly they are terribly uh, loyal. So if you buy a car from a big dealership, you will probably find that they will do things for you for free. So you'll probably find that, that we've experienced this here before. That you know some small thing that, that's that's a problem, and you take it to them and ask them to have a look at it. And quite often they'll do it for free if you bought the car from them. So it can go either way. So you know, obviously, if it's some small thing, maybe take it to the dealer, and then if you can get a relationship going with some local mechanic somewhere, that's a good one. Um, same as any other country, isn't it? You know, we, we need to find tradespeople that do the right thing by us and aren't too expensive. Uh, and if you can get one like that, a mechanic like that, then that's a good way to go as well. And you can do stuff yourself. There's um, there is shops here that do sell stuff. Um, not quite as many. In Australia, there tends to be big superstores of, of car parts and, you know, you can go and buy anything. You know, car trolleys and jacks and parts and you can buy anything. You can go into dealers and just buy the parts and go fix things yourself. And there tends to be a lot more of that in Oz because there tends to be more people that do that. And I, I gather there'd be a lot of other countries that would be the same. But Japan, not really. Usually there's one corner of of the hardware stores so they have these big hardware stores we've shown you before the big hardware stores here and, and often they'll have one corner where they have the car stuff but the car stuff tends to be tends to be uh, car wash and sponges and deodorizers and again the superficial stuff car mats and carpets and super super superficial stuff you, you don't normally get you know, decent motor oils and things like that in there. Even even motor oil, quite often, they don't even have it. So, quite often you have to go to dealers for it, you know. So, same with windscreen wipers. We need to get some windscreen wipers once and had to actually go to a dealer and pay $30 or something for a pair of windscreen wipers. So just the blades, just the rubber blades. So, so yeah, you, but you can do it yourself. That was the point, was that you can do do it yourself and, and then take it to get the shark end done. You can do that if you do a good job, you know. So, 
So yeah, but really the bottom line is if you can, if and we keep coming back to this when we talk about this topic, if you can avoid owning a car in Japan, avoid it. Because for most people living in the city, it's just not worth it. And that, a lot of Japanese people are the same. A lot of Japanese people living in the live in the cities won't won't have won't have their own car. Um, a lot of them, not everybody, but but yeah, big cities you usually don't need them. So anyway, I hope that was uh, of interest to some people. More videos coming soon.